The sofa button U2 Universal Remote can connect to over 50,000 devices and thousands of different brands. There's a few renditions of this. You get the U1, the U2, and there's also a variant with the hub. The one we have here today is the U2 Universal Remote. These are available on Amazon for $69.99 in the UK at the time of recording. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any user reviews on Amazon with this device as of yet, so I'm assuming it's still a fairly new product. We did find some reviews on the internet that give it a score of around 8.3 out of 10, which is reasonable, and we thought we'd take a look at it for ourselves. For those that may be new here, my name's Craig, this is Really Random Reviews. I know personally, I'd much rather have a single remote out on my desk that can control all of my devices than all of these that I've got in my remote pockets. Full disclosure here, Sofa Baton did send this out for review purposes with just one request which I found perfectly acceptable and that was that the video be produced within 3-4 to four weeks. Let's get into this and see if it's actually any good. The remote is compatible with Apple Play Store and Google Play Store for the application. In the box you'll get an instruction guide, the remote itself and it also includes two AA batteries. I thought this was a nice gesture. The remote control itself looks and feels pretty good. It's got a glossy black finish, rubber textured buttons, a scroll wheel and an LCD screen. It curves off at the bottom and it also feels really nice to hold in the hand. It's a far better quality than your typical universal remote. Let's go ahead and get this set up then. It does have a free application. A key point of interest for the application is you do need to create an account. I'm not entirely sure why you have to create an account and can't use a guest but you do need to create one. Let's go ahead and set it up then. Open your camera, scan the QR code, whether you're Apple or Google. The process is the same on both platforms. And then you're going to install the application. On the sofa button home menu, you'll enter your email and password and then grant it access. I grant it access while using the application and I just allow it permissions. Once you're into the application, you wanna hold down both of these buttons on the bottom of the remote to pair it to your device. I'm gonna to switch to my tablet here so I can give a better demonstration. There are two main ways to connect the devices. You can either search device name and enter the model number. You do need to be precise with the model number and then Sofa Baton will search its website to see if it's got a match. If it doesn't have a match, you can then send these details towards the developers along with your email. They'll then try to add this to the database at a later date. Most of your modern branded devices should be in the 50,000 device database, but I actually prefer to do the remote learning feature. This way I can choose what buttons do what and for what remotes plus all of the remotes that I'm using are fairly generic or pretty old now to get started tap add device in the top right corner then you want to go ahead and name and icon that device and then it will show you a keypad you press the button that you want to copy press copy from original remote and then you hold that button down for around four seconds until that blue bar goes all the way up and then that button is successfully copied to the sofa button u2 now you repeat the process, I try to keep all of the buttons as similar as possible even if they're in different locations, that way I know what buttons do what, but you may have to remember the odd button that's different here, but this isn't a major problem for me. Once you've successfully copied all of the keys that you want to copy, take it over to your device and test it out. I'm standing around 3 or 4 meters away from the TV, but I have tested it at further distances and it works absolutely fine. Although I did notice you do need to be in a direct line of sight. The TV powers on just fine. You use the scroll wheel to scroll through whatever device you're trying to control at that time. For me, it's the LG TV, so we're just going to check everything works, all of the menus, left and right, everything's fine. See if we can access our Amazon. Yeah, that's brilliant. It works as well as the LG remote, to be honest. Maybe even better. The LG TV now is several years old, so I don't expect it to be super fast. So far, so good. Device number one works just as expected. Let's go and see if I can connect this to the projector now then as well. So again, I'm just using the copy from original remote technique. I'm just going to select the few generic buttons that we have here. We only have a few buttons on this projector remote, but it should work. It's accepting the code, so I assume it'll work. I'm not going to keep going through this whole setup process, as once you've done one remote, you've done them all. They're pretty much the same. The only thing I've missed out here is that you can add macros, so you can control several devices at the same time. 
but as you can see here we've got full control of the projector all of the volume keys and everything works as expected so again i'm really impressed especially as this isn't a branded projector this is just a vanvo 1080p generic projector I'm interested to see if this remote works because this one is to my climatic fan which I use on a daily basis at the moment and I don't like using this remote it's not very responsive so I'm gonna see if we can get the U2 to copy this remote and see if that works the fan any better so we're gonna select fan on the remote and I'm impressed it actually works the fan not only does it work the fan it actually controls the speed settings and the oscillating feature and everything so I have full control of this from my desk, which is just how I like it. I'm going to test out some RGBs now then. This is the Lipro 5 meter IC strip. I'm just going to copy the remote and now we're going to select LEDs on the remote control. Again, you can have up to 15 devices at any one time here. At the moment, I've got six and yes, it works the LED strip as well. My LED controller is underneath the desk and like I mentioned earlier, you do need to have a line of sight. So I need to drop the remote down to my desk height for it to be effective. Again, for me, that's not a major issue. I have to do that with the other remote anyway. And if I'm honest, I actually think this remote works slightly better than the cheap generic plastic ones that I've been using. It seems to be more responsive. I've even got the RGB Nebula Spaceman synced up to the remote and it even controls this, all of its features and everything. To be honest, I'm walking around my house and trying to find remotes thinking I wonder if this one will work. I haven't found anything yet that doesn't work. The closest thing I found with a problem was the Technic separates. Now those Technic separates are 25 years old. The remote control is proprietary to that system and a lot of the features that were on there them days just don't exist today. So unfortunately, I won't be able to use the U2 remote with my Technics, but I'll show you some solutions in the hope that maybe it might work for one of you guys. When you're on the Add Device screen, you can click some of the icons at the top, the X-Infinity, the Roku, Apple TV, and stuff like that. Type in the brand of your product like we did before. Again, add the model number like we did before. But this time, we're going to look for some similar models and see if we can find something that's similar that will allow the remote to work. There's a few things to select. It asks you whether it's an AV receiver, a DVD, TV or a STB. We're going to go with popular models. And now, as you can see, it's shown us a whole list of serial numbers. If you're lucky, you might be able to find one that matches your product and it may allow you to use the U2 remote with that item. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me, but these remotes did. And I have to say, overall, I'm pretty impressed with this. If you had a home theater, for example, a surround sound system projector with some RGBs connected, you could easily connect the macro buttons to have everything come on at the same time. For me, I'm really impressed that it works this projector, my skybox and my TV. And I'm really happy that I can put all of these remotes back away now and just keep one remote out on my desk that has full control of everything. Another cool feature, the remote goes to sleep when you place it down and then it wakes up when you pick it up. You can change the time from 5, 10 to 30 seconds and you can also dim the screen if you wanna try and save the batteries and make them last a little longer. And then the scroll wheel is so you can access any of the 15 devices that you have connected. I really like this remote. If we're looking for a negative, I would say it's a dust magnet and a fingerprint magnet. It needs wiping off regularly if that kind of thing bothers you. It does struggle at distances or if there's obstacles. But other than that, guys, I can't really find any fault of it and I really like it. I'm not linked to or sponsored by Sofa Batten in any way and this is my honest opinion. I don't even have an affiliate link, but I think this is an awesome remote. I'll leave links down in the description in case you guys want to go and get yourselves one. Thanks to each and every one of you for being here today. I really appreciate that. If you found any part of the video helpful or informative at all, or just enjoy supporting small creators like me, please go ahead and like the video. Subscribe to the channel with your notifications on. That way you never miss any future videos. Take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, I'm Craig. This is Really Random Reviews, and I'll see you in my next video.